Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing Superbike 22. Now, we're here in Assen with Luca Myers on board the Kawasaki ZX-10RR. Now, there is something a little bit different you can't tell, but I'm actually using a different controller. Now for Ride Fall, MotoGP and even Superbike 22, I use the DualShock 4 controller, which is otherwise known as the PlayStation 4 controller. I always use that controller because I love the way it feels in my hand. It's quite a small controller and I don't really have the biggest of hands. The dead zone on the controller is very minimal and the same can be said for the triggers. So I do find I've got a really good feeling and balance with the DualShock 4. So today I decided to try the PS5 controller and I will give a shout out to Sergio23 because it was his suggestion basically. I thought of doing a video like this in the future which I probably will cover at some point but with a little bit more controllers. But for now, I'm using the Dual Shot, uh, the Dual Sense, should I say, the Dual Sense, the PS5 controller. Now, a little bit of a complaint, and I've had this complaint, and a few others have had it as well. Even MotoGP sports rider Jack Hammersley said the same thing as well. There's a lack of vibration, there's a lack of feedback in the controller when playing Superbike 22. It's rather strong in MotoGP, it's rather strong in Ride 4, but in Superbike 22, it's not so much. So the gameplay you're actually watching right now is me using the DualSense controller for the first time. And as you can see, we are significantly slower to what we have when we have the Dual, uh, DualShock controller. So breaking firm into turn one, the feeling I'm getting is the brakes need to be pressed a little bit stronger. The dead zone on the trigger is a little bit larger, so I'm finding that the first press doesn't register at all. But it, not in a bad way. It does feel like it's got more more um, length, if that's the term, the more pressure. There's, there's, there is a saying for it, and I cannot remember what it is, but there's more to it as like a longer press rather than just pressing the button with the DualShock, DualShock 4 and finding yourself slowing down. So, more travel, I think, is the word I was looking for, but I am su pleasantly surprised with the results in this one. Of course, I'm recording this one after I've actually done this, and to see that I'm only a couple of tenths of a second down to the, the control I've been using for the last 10 years is pretty impressive and I'm quite happy with that. I'm not necessarily sliding and making too many errors either. The, the lap time's still decent, the, the riding style looks okay. But it's just about getting used to these controllers. Now, some of you are going to be Xbox controllers and some of you are going to be PlayStation controllers, but try them both out and see which one you prefer. I know some riders there. Sergio is one of them. He bought the DualSense controller and hated it. Didn't work for him. He's been an Xbox controller guy. Much prefers that, but you've got to try these things because if you're finding that it's not working and the controller feels dodgy or you're just not picking it up, definitely try another controller. But so far so good. Into the second lap we are about a second slower. A little bit better than what we did in the previous lap. But as each lap goes on the better the controller will feel. And now my biggest worry is how will it feel when I go back to the DualShock 4? <laughs> is my feeling going to be completely ruined? I guess we'll find out, but firm and the brakes into strub and we'll go, but not firm enough. I didn't trust the front brake with the DualSense controller, so unfortunately that is a lap scrubbed off, and we're going to be trying another lap or another few laps with the DualSense just to give it a really good try, and then I'll do the same with the DualShock to talk about the differences and how it feels but so far I find the PS5 controller is a bit chunky it's a little bit big for my heavy hand uh, for my small hands to say big and heavy for my hands and it's, it's okay though it's fine it does feel premium if that's if that's a word it feels quite good quality a bit better build quality than the more plastic designs of the PS4 controllers but uh, I'm genuinely interested to see what you guys think and what controllers you use have you tried others? Will you try some more? Or are you just going to stick to what you know? Because it's one of those things, it's a very personal thing. The controller is the most sacred part of gaming, or the mouse and keyboard is as well. You've got to have those peripherals that work for you to enjoy the experience. And they have to be working well for you to really experience good feedback and good racing. Because racing is one of those fine, fine adjustments and fine tunes that can just change everything. So definitely consider that and just trying another controller. But this is still on the dual sense, and we're up by seven, eight tenths of a second, sliding into Ramshock here. This is looking rather promising. So after that first, not crash because we stayed up on a board and 
we went a little bit wide into Strubin. I feel pretty good. And now the change of direction, it doesn't look like we're going to beat the Dual Shock Force contro uh, controller's time. But I tell you what, to be within a couple of, what, less than a hundredth, of, uh, less than a tenth of a second. I'm quite proud of that. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to swap to this controller permanently, but uh, it does feel pretty good. And I look okay. I don't look like I'm making any particular massive mistakes, but that was a decent lap. And I do find the bike feels a little bit more stable under braking than the Dual Shock 4, which is odd because I'm so used to the Dual Shock 4, but I don't know. I'm a little bit keen to see if we can beat the lap time here because this was not a particularly impressive lap I set anyway. This was just the video I did for the Aston Guide where I was just trying to show you guys how to tackle this track. But when I really go for it and absolutely you know, gung ho, I do think we can get into the 131s. And I did that on an online session a few days ago, maybe a week ago. I set a 131 something and it was like my best lap ever in Aston. Snagged me pole position even ahead of Sacred Meerkat no less. But breaking into Mandevin for turn 10, we are actually ahead of the Ghost. Keeping it in nice and tight to the right hand side for the Duke's loot and then bringing on the power. Stay in 5th gear and keep nice and tight to the apex, we are still ahead of the Ghost. And if we're ahead of the Ghost by a tenth of a second, this could be a new lap time record for me. A little bit wide on the Dual Shock 4 controller, but now firm on the anchors we go with the Dual Sense. Keep it in, keep it in, and keep it in. Change the direction for 15, 16, and 17. Change the direction once more for 18. Across the line. It's an improvement. It's an actual improvement. We've improved with the Dual Sense controller. I never thought I'd be saying that. The Dual Sense controller this time around has beaten the Dual Shock 4, a controller I've been using for so long. <laughs> this is strange, but I'm sure. We can then now beat it with the Dual Shot 4, but I've got to be honest with you, this controller feels weird now. <laughs> oh my goodness. It feels so cheap and plasticky now. <laughs> what the hell? It feels so light and nimble, and the brakes feel a little bit odd. Like, I can only press it a little bit, and it really is strong. I much prefer the analog stick. Now, getting back to this one, I do like the feeling of it being so precise that even the smallest movement will register with the game but it looks like the feeling is still there and we're already up by three tenths of a second so this could be a done deal for the DualShock 4 and this could be an absolute ultimate win. We'll find out as well uh, as we go on but now into Debolt for turn 9. I always make a little mistake here going into 9 and then into 10 but so far so good. A little bit gentle on the acceleration coming out of Mandarin but it will bring on the power and we'll keep it in Nice and tight for turn 11 here. A little bit too tight there. Got a little bit too greedy. We're bringing in nice and tight once more for turn 12. <laughs> I was going to try and pronounce that corner name. Someone gave me some advice on that one. I still can't pronounce it. We'll, we'll try again at some other point. But now into Ramshuk. We're losing a bit of time. but And this should be where we're superior. On the brake. Sliding it into the gear to Mr. Kane. Oh, got caught on the, the inside of the rumble strip there. It sort of sucking me in. That was a strange feeling. It didn't really happen on the dual sense, so that was odd, but firm on the brakes will go for turn one. I'm going to try and do the four laps here as well, so what we did earlier with the, the dual sense, we'll do pretty much here as well. So it's going to be eight laps in total, four laps for us to at least go on par with the dual sense controller. I never thought I'd be saying that, I really didn't. I expected this video to be very one sided. Going into Struben, I do feel a lot better. I feel like I've got a lot more confidence with the bike. Upshifting, everything just feels a lot better. But with the same button layout, the analog sticks in the same um, asymm uh, symmetrical view, it does feel a lot better for me. I've always preferred the PlayStation controllers, and now we're beginning to get ahead of the Ghost. This is going to be a rather important sector, because I do find Sector 3 is my weakest sector. And look how much quicker we were with the dual sense. Not bad, but firm on the brakes will go for the left-hand side. Into Debolt will go. A little bit out of shape, a little bit slipping and sliding, but I do like to play that way. I know it might look a bit aggressive and a bit dangerous, but I do rather enjoy just sliding the rear in, and I didn't feel I had the confidence to do it with the dual sense. Now, I know the, the dual sense controller was a little bit... How do I describe this? Inconsistent, let's say. The lap times have been all over the place, and this one so far looks to be pretty solid. We've jumped straight on, we've done a 132-1, and we're going to do another 132, I do hope, as we go firm on the brakes, keep it in nice and tight, get the change direction, I've just touched the apex once more. It's lost us a little bit of time, but bringing on the power across the line, it's a second lap in a row with a 132-1. So very important to feel and understand the consistency. Yes, we might do quicker with a different controller, but 
the be all and end all is being consistent. Reliable and consistent. And so far, no crashes, only one big mistake, which we went into scrubbing too hot, which is quite rare that we do that. But now, change the direction into my favourite corner here in Aston. Keep it in, keep it in, keep it in. Bring on the power. Slightly eager on the acceleration. That's the difference between the triggers there. The very small travel with the DualShock 4 compared to the larger travel with the PS5 controller is rather one, a rather difficult one to get used to, let's say. But I got caught up watching us fight the Ghost Edge a moment ago. But now to the right hand side for Steckenval. Keep it in, keep it in too tight there. We've done that too many times. And now we've lost a little bit of ground to the Ghost. But it's not a problem. We can go into Debulk quite confidently. Keep it in nice and tight. Bring on the upshifts and keep it in nice and tight once again. Downshift to Defersa. That's a bit of a mistake. And yes, I felt that was coming. Downshifting there into first gear is not what I usually do. Overthought that one a little bit because I'm actually feeling the pressure to beat the lap time that's been set because it just feels weird to know that the dual sense controller is ahead. This is not a controller I've been using often. I very rarely go on my PS5 now, to be quite honest with you. But we're now ahead of the Ghost. We'll tackle Struben in a moment. And if we get the good line coming into this corner, because this is where I feel far superior. The, the corners such as Struben with the really tight, really hard braking zones, I do feel a lot better than I did with the DualSense, but that's not to say the DualSense controller didn't do it well. We still felt pretty confident, but it's just those few nuances that feel different, and that's what's most important. But since we wasted the lap on uh, the previous lap time when I crashed, I will call this one the final lap. Because I'm trying to give it both lap times, both four laps each, and one of them we blew on the dual, uh, the dual shock. So now into Mandeville for turn 10. We are up by a tenth and a little bit, so I think this is the lap time we do take over from the front and we do replace the dual sense as the top controller for Superbike 22. But this has been a very fun idea, and I'm keen to see if you guys have any suggestions. I've got some more guides to do and a few other things as well, but this one looks to be a done deal now. Three tenths of a second up as we go into the gear to Michigan. I was going to say my favourite part, but that's almost a little bit better than Strubber. But oh, we, we messed it up actually into 17. We absolutely blew it. We've absolutely whiffed on the final lap. Well, I didn't see that coming, but the proof is in the pudding. The dual shot controller was a lot more consistent. Lap 6, 5 and 7, all in the top 4. Whereas only one of them was better, which was lap 4 with the dual sense controller but the second split with the dual sense on our second lap was the fastest time interesting very very interesting i've really enjoyed making this video so i hope you guys did too again let me know in the comment section down below what controllers you use and which one you want me to try next and i guess i'll see you in the next video so thanks for watching it's been a pleasure like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video ciao for now oh hi didn't quite see you there Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.